call to worship. The Lord is His holy temple together. Father, we just thank you for so many wonderful things you've given in our lives, Lord, and definitely what you've done, what you gave us in the form of your Son, Jesus Christ, Lord. <clears throat> in many ways, we are just so uh, easily forgotten of what you have went through on the cross for us and how much you love us, Lord. So, Lord, as we come to worship you right now, help us to really keep our concentration and focus on you, Lord that you are the most important thing right now as we worship you, Lord. So, Lord, as we come before you, a holy God, we ask that you forgive us <clears throat> for the many times we have um, forgotten who you are and forgotten who we are as a child of God, Lord. So, Lord, cleanse us right now as we come before a God, as we come before to worship you, Lord, that our hearts will be right and pure in your sight. Lord, be with us this hour right now as we sing, as we pray, as we read your word, as we listen, that your Holy Spirit can be touching each and every one of our lives. Let's recite the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Please be seated. Good morning. The first song is called More Precious Than Silver.
responsive reading. It's titled Surrender, speaking from uh, Acts 3, 19, 2 Corinthians, and Galatian. I'll read the pastor's part, and the congregation can read it, read it together, the congregational part. Godly grief produces a repentance not to be regretted and leading to salvation, but worldly grief produces death. Repent then and turn to God, so that no sins may be wiped out. The times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Christ has liberated us into freedom. Therefore, stand firm and let us live again to the yoke of slavery. Let's all stand for Apostles' Creed as we recite it together. Let's begin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day, He rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints. Forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Right now we're going to open up this time for the congregational congregation to share. And stand up, say your name nice and loud, and uh, keep it short and be make sure it's uh, praiseworthy to our Lord. Hi, um, I'm Clifton. I'm a junior at um, Mills High School. And um, it's been like a third or a fourth through the school year. And um, recently, I found myself um, going back to old habits, um, old habits that haven't been pleasing to God. And um, I'd like to ask the congregation to um, pray not just for me, but for anybody else who might be going through this as well, who might be going through, um, going back to old habits, that um, we, that God help us to, um, clear those out of our mind and um, help us remember that um, the only habits that we should be doing should be those that are pleasing to him. Uh, thank you. Anybody else? Yes. Hi, my name is Inga. Uh, thanks God for showing me a place to buy the Bible just for one dollar at the dollar store on Mission Street and Harrington. And I love to give Bible to the people around me and encourage the people around me to read the Bible because Bible is God's word and God's word gives us hope. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Now, let's join our hearts in prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for life that you've given to us, Lord, eternal life. The right as we have received you, that we're a new creation, Lord, and old things should have passed away. But many times, our old sin, our old habits come back. And not because we want to, but definitely, you know, Satan wants his way wants us to be further and further away from you. So Lord, help us, help Clifton, as well as all of us that's struggling with the bad habits that we have and, and to really seek for your help, to really help ask that you give us to not yield to temptation, because you have, you, you weren't given to us that we can't overcome it, Lord. So Lord, help us to be strong in you, to be fervent, to be continuing to please you in each and every way, Lord. So, Lord, be with all of us, Clifton, as well as that as we live each day for you, Lord, that your Holy Spirit can be always there telling us, warning us to sometimes even run away from the temptation, Lord. Lord, right now we thank you for a chance that you, the Bible you've given to us, that we're so freely in this country that the many times we neglect you know, even see the importance of the Bible and 
in many countries, you know, they're, they're, they're dying for it, in a sense, to read your word. So, Lord, help us as opportunities as we get to share your love, your words to others, Lord, especially those that are lost, those that are hurting, that through your word that they can be comforted, through, the, through your word they can be found, find, finding you in their lives, Lord. So, Lord, help us as we learn to use your Bible and to really read it each and every day, Lord. Father, we thank you for this time we have as we continue to worship you, that your Holy Spirit will be continue uh, guiding our hearts, Lord, to give you all the glory and praise. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Part of God's unconditional love for us is to give us freedom. And I hope that each moment you have it's a choice, and I hope that you choose Jesus. receive the offering. Let's continue meditating upon his son and his words. Father, we just thank you for the many gifts you give in our lives each and every day, Lord. Help us to learn to appreciate it. Help us to be thankful in all things, Lord. Lord, help us as we give back to you. Help us to give cheerfully to you, Lord, from our hearts. Lord, right now as we continue to worship you, we ask that you continue to help us to 
keep our focus upon you, Lord, and help us to listen to what you have for us to learn today, how, we, how it's going to change our lives, how it's going to make us to be more of a man and woman of God that you want us to be, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Right now we're going to have the combined choir to share with us, Uncle, with you are love.
staggered clapping, okay? <laughs> Not quite like God's love. Your love, God's love is everlasting and it never ends, okay? And I hope you get to know God better, and I hope you represent God better. Uh, we have a nice church here. We had a wonderful time Friday night at the Harvest Fest, and we're displaying God's love to the community, okay? Uh, we have, in our church, we have a lot of people come, a lot of people go, okay? Today, we're going to have somebody that has come, okay? Tomorrow, he will go, okay? This is Reverend Go from our Singapore church that's going to share with us a lively message. I heard him in the Cantonese, and those guys are going crazy. <laughs> they were laughing and everything. You're a funny guy. Okay, so uh, Reverend Go is uh, the pastor at our Singapore church. So if you ever, ever go to Singapore, right in the central part of S Singapore, they, we have a church there. And they're just starting uh, another church, uh, another, um, hmm, another site and reaching a different de demographic of people there, okay? The first one's a lot of students. Next one's going to be more middle age and, you know, around that. So, so he's going to share with us some of the stuff, but more importantly, he's going to share with us God's word. So um, before he goes tomorrow, um, let's pray for him and encourage him, and may, his, may the word of God speak to us. So let's welcome Reverend Go before he goes. Uh, thank you, Clifford. Clifford is my man. <laughs> when he was saying Ken, uh, in my mind, my, my last name is Go, so he said, Ken Go. You know. <laughs> Are you asking me to go? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want to praise God for all he's doing back in Singapore. Uh, we have started two churches already by now. One is at the west side of Singapore. Um, a Korean church is very graciously uh, willing to use his, uh, allowing us to use his place to start a brand new cornerstone church on the west side of Singapore. And then uh, last year, we have formally registered a church in Auckland, New Zealand. And by the blessing of, the, uh, of our Lord and cornerstone, of course, uh, that church is growing very, very fast. We thank God for all his doing. And this is by his grace that we can be here. Let's again bow our head for a word of prayer. Father, we thank God for this wonderful time as we gather here. We want to pray that you touch our heart through the word, the word of our Lord and through the work of the Holy Spirit. Lord, may our heart be touched and our life be transformed. We pray all this in our Lord Jesus Christ's name. Amen. There's a phenomenon going everywhere and we are so accustomed to the present culture here in the 21st centuries. And so much more that we, we may out of touch that, you no, know, whether should we say something about it? Should we actually make some uh, statement about this? You know, we need to juggle around ourselves again sometime you know, in our Christian life. And recently there is a phenomenon about something called a new word, I, I would know, self I. This is new to me, you know, uh, even though I'm not that old, but this is new. And what I'm trying to say here is that this, this thing that's going on for a couple of years, like that, I think it's about three years, and everybody's doing it. The bad part is they're doing it everywhere. They're doing it at a park, they're doing it at a school, and they're doing it at a washroom, in their own toilet. <laughs> I, I don't get it. What is there to take in the toilet? I mean, some of the guys want to show that six pack, or whatever, you know. <laughs> you know that, right? I mean, probably you're doing that too. I, I don't know. Yeah. But the thing is this. I mean, you do what you want to do, man, but don't post on Facebook. <laughs> and, uh, this is quite a what kind of um, pollution everywhere. You know? And so finally, the Americans speak out. They spoke out saying that the APA says that whoever that took three pictures of themselves, more than three to five to ten a day, this is classified as mental illness. <laughs> it's wrong. Amen, I say. You should come earlier. But why are we doing this? Are we so accustomed to the culture, wherever that is uh, around us? The way we eat, the way we, we dress, the way we pick the colors? And the more and more this phenomenon that's going on the street now, and then 
I try not to say all this uh, marriage thing that you know about. We need to know how to put a stand on this, but not to just blind out and just say that I don't agree. As a Christian, I, I think we need to put a stand because we are, so, we are so clear, so firmly clear that this is what the Bible is saying. Well, I hope I, we have time to sit down in the classroom and go through all these cultural elements. And then based on the Word of God, not just your personal perspective, come on. We must go back to the Word of God. Try to understand how the logic works there. And then ref reflect upon. And this is something I must, I must share with you. I, I don't believe that this is only classified for the people who are in the uh, higher education, people who are in their 25, 30s. I strongly believe based on all my previous research, a child that are in their 13, 1, 3, are smart enough to know all this. And I've tested this again and again and again. So don't ever look down on a kid that is about 13 years old. They are smart enough to know all this. Just that we must learn to negotiate, learn to talk to them about all these things. Today, I'd like to walk with you on a topic called Rethinking Abundant Life. Rethinking Abundant Life. Abundant life is not something that is new. Let's read together the scripture from the Bible, shall we? Let's all read together. Come. The thief. I think we are very gentle. Uh, this is a gentle congregation. Can I invite you to read again strongly, boldly? This is, uh, uh, it's like, you're not sure. The thief come, maybe? No, no. To steal? Oh, I don't know. I came. So who, who came? I don't know who came. Holiday? No, no. no. This is the word of God and I invite you to read loudly. Can we? All right, again. Amen. <laughs> Sophia, this is well trained by Sophia, our director. Very good voice. Isn't it? Huh? Indeed. This is a very simple and a popular verse among the Christians. We know this. We know that the Lord has come and He has brought life to us. And not only that, He promised us a life that we can live abundantly. Based on the verses, we, we can understand that there is a contrast, there is a comparison between a false shepherd and a good shepherd. What the Bible is trying to say here is to, to allow us to understand at the point of time there is a contrast, there is a comparison between two kinds of people or maybe two people, the Pharisees and Jesus himself. The Pharisees are there not to just to please you, they are there for a motive for themselves. They want to gain something through this experience. They want to gain something from, from this religious activity. This is the Pharisees. They are here to steal you. They are here to kill you. They are here to destroy you. There is something here today in San Francisco. There is something here today in the 21st century when if you are not careful, you will be drawn away very easily. Look at your physical life. Look at your materialistic life. Look at the things around you. You know, I, I, don't know, I don't know whether this is a, 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 a greed notion that everyone must use their iPhone everywhere, anyhow. I, I, I don't get it. This is not that important. But it's already become a, a phenomenon. We cannot stop it anymore. But Jesus came not to destroy our life. People who know Christ know that He came so that we can have life. And He came so that we can have it abundantly. To, to make it statement stronger, let's look at the, the false shepherd. They do things that, the, the good stuff, so that it can be noticed by man. They block the entrance into the kingdom, which means that they are trying to confuse you, delay you, doing something so that you do not know there is a kingdom. Oh, I don't know God. Now, I have been here for many years in LA, more than 10 over years. And one thing that I cannot get it is Halloween. You know, there's something that troubles me because when I talk to Chinese, I say, that, do you want to know God? There's no God. Then why are you celebrating Halloween? And they believe in Halloween. You know, this is something great about Chinese. They don't trust God that much, but they believe in ghosts. Whenever they go to, go to a ghost movie, 
That's where they get a bit twitchy. <gasps> so when they walk home, they, when the wind starts to blow behind the head, whoom, there's ghosts. They believe in ghosts so much that so much more than they believe in God. The Pharisees lies. The Pharisees are considered hypocrite. They convert others to the wrong side. But Jesus gave us a different road. Jesus says, I come so that you can have life. Have life in the Greek text means so that you can know God. And this is compatible in line with the teaching from the book of gospel. God wants us to have life. But have life means not just to have a life. that which, I mean, I have life, come on. I have life already. But to have life means to know God. Christianity is very relational. To know God in person. To experience Him. And the second thing in this word, abundant, means transform. It's not transformer, the movie. I mean, transform means that you change to something better. You improve upon. You make yourself a better person. So the word here, it, abundance has a, another word called super uh, abundance, meaning that it, it has this element of transformation. So when you come to believe Christ, it's not just one experience. Believing in Christ is a walk at the park. You know, you walk with Jesus. Slowly you improve all the way to the end of your time. Now, we, we must know this because a lot of us have this understanding about retirement which is wrong. The Bible never agrees with retirement. The only retirement come close to it is to see him personally when you die. And a lot of us have this notion that I want to retire now, now. Hope I can retire at what, the age of 40, age of 30, age of 25. How much I can be the, the founder of, of Facebook? I can be as rich as this Steve Jobs. So I have this ton of money. Ha ha! I can retire right now, right here, right this moment. But what do we mean by retire? Let me explain to you. The adult world, in the adult world, they are adult, uh, retirement means I can do nothing. I have nothing to do with my life. I have, I have nothing to do anything with my work. I have nothing to do with my wife. I have nothing to do with my kids. I can do nothing. That's retirement. And doing nothing means you die. <laughs> Imagine you do nothing. And this is, this is not the kind of, of life we're talking about. Based on the work of our very famous guy, the, the father of the modern management, Dr. Peter Drucker, he said this, life, our young guy, listen to this, life has three parts. From zero to 40, the beginning of your life. Zero to 40, which means that you start to prepare yourself. You've you got to get to the point of independency your financial, your life, your emotion as a person, come on. You are so old already. You are not even there yet. You know, sometimes we look at baby. I, 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 we own, Cornerstone own quite a few businesses in Singapore. We hope to expand it. And one of the businesses we are trying to engage is, is kindergarten. And when you look at a baby, baby is so cute. Especially the uh, you know, European baby. They have all this curly hair. You know, I don't know how to get it, how to get this curly hair. They don't even just blow their hair. The hair is green curly. So when they, 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 when they crawl on the floor and say, Mama, milk, Mama, milk, they're so cute. <laughs> you know, you're just pinched in the face. Say, How come I don't get this on face anymore? They're so cute. But imagine a man, 40 years old, crawling on the floor, milk, milk, milk. <laughs> I guarantee you will vomit and die. <laughs> it's not right. So, Zero to 40 is the first stage of your life. But between 40 to 70 is supposed to be the experience of value, which means that you start living something about value. You start giving value. You start portraying the value of your life. It means that whoever you are, you're there for a higher purpose. Someone feel that, hey, you're here for a purpose. You are a meaningful person. I like you. 40 to 70, that's where we do become the best wife, best husband, good worker, professional, and abundant Christians. Shouldn't we? Or being, I mean, this is something I experienced when I was back in LA. I realized that people from, not necessarily 40, between 30 to 40, men start to lose hope in their life. Men start to get confused. Men are living still, in, although they are in the age of 13. I don't get it too. I don't understand. You are at the age of 20, 30, and 40, and your, your worldview is still back there. And Peter Drucker said this, the best part of your life is to come after 70. 
that's the best part of your life, that you start to produce the wisdom, and the abundant life that you ought to. You see, God promised us what? Through Jesus Christ, we know God. Secondly, you walk with Jesus, and your life continues to transform again and again and again to the day you see the Lord, our God, in heaven. So before that, don't talk to me about retirement. If you are having the wrong notion, of course. But will you retire so that you can do a better thing for God, so that you can better transform yourself? Why not? So my sermon ends with this title. What is your choice of life? So Ren Lau, my sermon has ended. I promise you, a short sermon, right? <laughs> but in view of the length of a sermon, I have to introduce you something else. Let me explain to you through one good example. What causes abundance life? Or what causes happiness in life? In the research that was done many years ago, this research was a very famous research, uh, very well known. He says that if you really want to learn, Christians, you know, you, you, although you want to live a life of abundance, but we, we need to learn if there are some ways, some techniques, some skills that we, we need to embrace. There are three things. One, one of the important things is about our genetics. There's nothing you can do about genetics. The second thing is about big life event. And the third thing is about choices. Let me share with this. 48% of our genetics are fixed. You can't do anything about it. There's nothing you can do. It's already there. A research that was done back then in 1930s, 75 pairs of identical twins was born, and they were separated and adopted by different family, different parents. And the age of 40, when they returned, the research found, hey, it's true. No matter where they go, no matter who they were brought up with, their genetic emotion are pretty much fixed, which means that you can be currently happy. You know, there are some people that you, don't, you, don't, you, don't, you may not like them, whether it's good weather or bad weather. They laugh. They're always happy. I don't, I don't know why. Bad weather, happy. Good weather, very happy. No weather, even happier. No. <laughs> They are born that way. They are just happy. So these are the people that you don't get. They have the happy DNA. <laughs> and these are already inbuilt in your life. You can't change it. And even though sometimes it be genetic from the parents. <laughs> Grumpy. It's always the case. I, I don't know why. But you know, this is the thing. Let me ask you a question. What if I ask you, what is the unhappiest age of a man's life. Tell me. Do you know that? What is the most possible question, answer for that? The unhappiest age of a man. Guess what? It's 45. At the age of 45, men get average, unhappy. Why? Because when they are in the 20s, in their 30s, they are so energetic and passionate about their dreams. They go forth to get a job. They go forth and go after a wife. And then they suddenly have two kids. Don't know why. And then they have a house. You know, you know that, right? That, that, that comes. It's a surprise always. Ah, baby! My goodness! Uh, that's two! And three is coming! Uh, and you know what it takes to have three kids or four. One of my students came to me and said, Pastor, I want to thank God for me, for my family. We have five kids now. I almost faint on the floor. <laughs> I can't imagine having two, but he had five. Oh, God, and it's not easy. I prayed for him uh, fervently. <laughs> you know why 45? By the time he hit 40, he started to realize that, no, is this what I want in life? And this is based on good research. Many men suddenly feel that this is not what I want. I mean, it's, it's hard to put it on the table and say that, is it the life you want? Is it the wife you want to marry? Is it the kids you want to have? And, but you cannot stop. It's like a car on the freeway. You're driving so fast, 100, 100, kilometers, 100 miles per hour. You can't stop. Because you have two kids to feed. You have the wife to love. You have two parents to, to take care. Wow. 
and you have to drag on unhappy. This also consider genetic. You can't change it. You have to get on on your life. The second thing you need to know is about big life events. We all caught up with big life events, like getting a new car, buy a new house, go to the most prestigious school, buy a new shirt. You know, trust me. Now, there are many women that to get their face done. The SK1, SK2, SK3, SK4. By the way, there's no 3 and 4, there's only SK2. Now, you, you know that. <laughs> no. And a man, a woman like to get their fingers done, you know. The, you know they, they put a lot of things on their fingers. You know, all the pedicure, medicure, but the heart no cure, you know, everybody that feels. Huh? I don't get it. But imagine, how big is your toe? <laughs> you know, I just don't, don't understand. The, the woman like to put the sunrise, sunshine, you know, and the 3D effect, you know. But who look at your feet? You, know, you don't walk like that. <laughs> but these things that you consider by big event make you happy. Buy a new dress. But in research, tell me that all this good stuff in your life, getting a good school, getting a good wife, getting a good marriage, getting a good house, good car, it only lasts for an average of six months. That's it. It's gone. You may be happy driving a new car. Toyota. <laughs> but at the end of six months, da da da. <laughs> so what you do? You buy a new car. And then six months again. So leasing is a good idea, actually. You know. <laughs> this is not going to last. Only six months. Whether you get a new girlfriend or old girlfriend, whatever girlfriend you get, six months. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And you have to live your life. Big event doesn't count. But we, in, in this world, it accustoms us that we, we want to follow all these big things. I, I was caught up at the traffic, this... Uh, the big thing you know, downtown uh, uh, Friday, you know, I, I don't say it, huh? don't say it, don't mention it. Uh, uh, I don't know about it, but I was called. Big event! I would say, so what, six months. <laughs> That's it. We remember nothing about it. Yeah. Six months. So how much? How many percentage? 40%. But you can imagine, 40% of your life is about big events. But if you base on that, it will be very sad. So when you have 48% genetics, 40% big events, that, that leaves us to only, what, 12%. Let me give you an example. Crop plagia is one of the issues that we, we used to do. And this is one of the classic research. Crop means a person without the functionality of anything from neck down, paralyzed. You couldn't move. It's stuck. But the research concluded that even this person, when he go down to the very bottom of his life, you know what? In six months' time, he came back. Not to the most, not to the, the, the time prior to his accident, but just six months, he regained his happiness. Do you believe that? He wanted to find the strength to live on life again, hoping that he move his arms and legs, hoping that he can gain life, meaning in his available, whatever, time he got. And the person who hit the lottery, we thought, that, hey, that's good, man. Imagine one million. Yo, that's me. But very soon, less than a month, not even six months, he lost, he, they loses all their happiness in life. All the small things, you know, walking, I, 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 I must confess, I'm, I, I'm not only a Mac fan, you know, I'm a Mac fan. Uh, I think I'm trying to persuade you, don't use, don't use PC, come on. Just, just put them aside. Respectfully, you know. <laughs> try to use Mac, come on. There's no virus, there's no this defragmentation, the offices are free. Oh, well, that's not important. Let's go back to the free. <laughs> what I'm trying to say, I mean, there's a habit. I want to confess, I'm a fan of Starbucks. I mean, in, not the sense of Starbucks, but coffee. Coffee, coffee. Uh, not Starbucks, coffee. Yeah, because of their stand, so I must stay away from them now. But I, I like that feeling of going into the car park and then open up the door and say, Sir, what do you like to have? Grande coffee. <laughs> wow. You know that feeling? Without saying anything, just buy the cup of coffee and walk out of the Starbucks shop. You know, the things I, I, I recently realized, I, I bring my cup, going back to my office, put it down on my table, start working with my wireless stuff, and by lunchtime, I realized I didn't even finish my cup. It's there! The whole cup is still there. 
Why? Because I have this kind of experience. I, I wish I could have. But this is fun. This is interesting. It makes me feel that I'm awakened. I'm a man. A coffee. You, know? <laughs> you see, this is, this is joy. You know, this is a small thing. Going out with my, my wife, going out with my family, you know, enjoying the uh, uh, weekend time. All these are small things, but they are happy time of mind. But once you hit the lottery, all these are gone. Nothing is going to make you happier because nothing. Coffee? Okay. I have a million dollars. What is coffee about? Nah. You know, you just throw all the small things around. You say, not important. And that is something about the big events. Do not caught up by the big events. Look back into your life. Rethink. And the third thing, of course, and the only thing left is choices. This is what will last, trust me. This is what's going to last forever. At least based on research. You say about re- abundant, abundance life? Jesus promised us abundance life. Already given. All you need to do is to, to grab it, experience it. But there is only so much to have. If you go about all these things, the genetics, you cannot change the big event. It's not going to last. There's only one thing left. I wish, I wish I could tell you earlier. There's only four things. Faith, family, work, and community. And this is a hard work of research. 130 years of research confirmed that if you really want to have a sustained happiness, abundance life that God has promised you, stay here. Don't go there. Stay here. Four things. One, faith. In Christians, this is our faith. God has chosen you. God has made you realize that He is God. Stay here. And this is going to make you happy. Enjoy this. Don't try to just mingle around, but enjoy very, every single deep of it. Second thing, family. I, mean, I know that there's uh, problems within families. You know, uh, you, when you get married, you know, right? trust, trust me, young guys. Huh? Uh, you have not gone there yet, but the honeymoon will pass and the real stuff will come. You know? and, and, but it's good. You know? But one thing I, I, I'm glad, I never quarrel with my wife. Never for the 20 some years of marriage. I feel that if there's a hard time, there's some strong voice and there's some loud, high pitched tone, but never. <laughs> no, she sings, I sing, you know. Sometimes I hit a G, she hit a A, you know, something like that. Ah! No, no, that's all. But we are, we are good friends. We, we come together so much. We, we play music. She plays her piano, I play my cocoon. Uh, I like the kind of jazz stuff, you know. Uh, is it okay? Jazz? <laughs> yeah, I like to play some drum. Ba, 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 ba. It's fun. I, I do that. I do that. But it's good. Family is wonderful. I enjoy it. And when she cooks, I bring out for a nice restaurant. Every single time, I'm happy. I embrace this. I protect this. Don't take it away from me. And the third thing is about work. Many of us has a, a, a misunderstanding about work. Work is God's promise. You're supposed to experience the gift that you have. What you do best. Not the school. Not the school tell you. Not about the church or anyone tell you what is best for you. But you alone, you find this is God's gift to me. And this is what I found in Cornerstone. That's what I learned from Reverend Lau. That allowing us to use our gift to serve Him. And this is fun. You know, I, you, if you play games before, you know, you just don't... You don't know about the time, how many times they fries, hours and hours. Work is the same. I enjoy the work that I do. I very much enjoy it as, as a pastor, educator, motivational speakers. I'm doing all this. I'm speaking to the business people all over the world. I enjoy every single bit. Very nice. And the fourth one, community life. Listen to this. You cannot be a Christian without a church community. And this is a very good stuff. You might get this. No Christian can be a Christian without Christian community life. And you cannot get your life transformed without the community life in church. Which means if you want to be a better person, look for a community. But for a Christian, I will strongly advise you, go back to your cell group. And that is where you got transformed. From an emotional person to a well-cared person. From a very harsh person to a gentle person. From a chaotic person person from a well-organized person. Where you get it from? Community life. That's where we come together and improve one another. I have hundreds of students coming back for me to get this training. And this training in Singapore alone, one hour may cost you about 500 US. Just one hour, I'm telling you this. 
And this guy love it. They come back every summer, every weekend, just to learn community life. And why don't you? One thing that I learned from my EQ trainer, I'm a certified EQ tr trainer. Uh, I give EQ training everywhere. And the trainer, the mentor who trained me, she gave me a very nice word. He said that once you understand about life, you make it so simple, and you conclude something like this. You say, not to be the best in the world, but pray to be the best for the world. Beautiful. My heart melt immediately when I heard that. We are trying to be the best in the world. Everywhere we go, the school, the church, the cell group, the working place, everyone says, I want to be the best in the world. You can forget about that. It's not going to make you happy. But once you understand the, the promises that God has given to you, not to be the best in the world, but I challenge you, I engage you, be the best for the world, be the best for the church, be the best for the cell group, but most of all, be the best for God, for Him. It's beautiful, isn't it? I must thank God. This is my 30th anniversary after the day when I caught a kind of a deadly sickness or disease. Um, 30 years ago, I, I couldn't walk because of the attack of the disease. I, I was pretty much put on the, on the bed, bottom down, basically nothing can move. <laughs> you know. It took me about one and a half year before I could actually slowly move out from the bed and start crawling and I started to make some minimum movement. And look at me today, your humble brother here. 30 years of grace from God. I'm able to walk, I'm able to run, I'm doing weightlifting a lot. Every day, brothers. Yeah. I'm training myself. Why? I, I want to experience that God had promised me, promised me the abundant life that He gave me. I will challenge you again. This is my sermon today. And I will say, choose abundant life. That God said this, I come. Why came that they may have life that had and have it abundantly? Praise the Lord. Let's pray. <laughs> Father, we thank you for this wonderful moment. We believe that you are always there to encourage us to relive our life once more. It's not that we forsake whatever that is done in the past, but we believe every walk is the grace of yours. We believe that it is you who make us. We thank you and all the glory praises to be given to you alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Take my life and let it be. Take my life and let it be consecrated. given to us this morning, Lord. May we not waste this information that we have, but that we put it into practice, that we can continue loving you and choosing to love you. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Mr. Randy. Yes, it's time of our service where we welcome our guests. If you are a guest or you brought a guest, please take this time to introduce yourself or your guest. Not thank you. Okay, welcome to all of you. Oops, there's one right there. 
morning. We have a couple of guests from uh, staying with us from Seoul, Korea. Matt Wong and June Kim. Welcome. He wants to join the basketball ministry. <laughs> Welcome. Okay, we have several announcements. Uh, first slide, slide please. Okay, um, we are in need of a, what do you call it, a play kitchen count, uh, center, okay? If, if any of your children are grown up past the, you know, the kitchen uh, unit thing and you have one that's in good condition, uh, please uh, let the office know, let Mamie know, and maybe send a photo in and so we can take a look at it and see if we uh, can use it in our, in our school. Okay, that would help cut costs and things like that. Next slide. Um, we're having a baptism next month, okay? So today is the deadline for uh, signing up for baptism. If you'd, like, if you'd like to get baptized, we have six people getting baptized right now. They, uh, uh, they're, they're getting everything in order. Uh, see Pastor Bubbles uh, if you want to form and fill that out as fast as you can, and we'll tell you what to do. All you have to do is get a, you know, fill out the form, get a, get a testimony written, and a little picture of yourself so we can um, get it all ready for December 31st. Next slide. Uh, we all, along with the foundations, without, along with the baptism, we have a foundations class that just began today. So we had the five baptismal candidates uh, come to the class, and we had some other people. So we would like to let you know that if you would like to find out more about the abundant life that Pastor Go spoke about, and more about you know how to have true happiness, the four things. Um, Come to our foundations class. Learn about the basics of the Bible and, uh, and the Christian life and what God really has for you. All right, so next week, 10 o'clock, we're in the John room, room 358, uh, on this floor, just down the hall that way. Okay, we're open to anybody who would like to come. All right, next slide. Um, we are, this month, we're having a Thanksgiving dinner on uh, Sunday, November 23rd, okay, 4.30. Uh, we'd like you to come. We'd like your, your family to come, okay? So we're, we have some tickets outside. All you have to do is sign your name and how many people might come, and we'll give you some tickets, all right? We can only fit 600, we'll squeeze 700 maybe or something like that, okay? So uh, think about it now, and if you want to invite some friends, please pray for them before you invite them. Don't just put their name in there, okay? We want to make sure that every seat is uh, not, it, every seat is taken, all right? That not wasted. All right, so um, uh, if you have any questions, please see the ladies, at the, uh, the people at the uh, information desk at the, at the, uh, in the rotunda. All right? If you have any questions, ask your leaders, ask your Sunday school teachers, ask, ask anybody, and we'll fill you in on that. All right? Uh, next slide. Uh, we will have our Marriage with Kids seminar, not today, but next week. All right, sign up with MJ. Next slide. Uh, on November, two weeks from now, we'll be having a men's, hmm, Breakfast, okay? Uh, it'll cost $5. Uh, see Ta if you need more information. Uh, Ta Ratana. Um, five bucks will cover the pancake mix and the bacon and sausage and whatever is there, all right? Uh, starts 8 o'clock in the morning. You have to be here early, all right? And then you prepare your own pancakes and, and, and stuff, your style, okay? We'll have the grills ready, hot and ready, and everything like that, okay? So this is a casual, uh, kind of informal uh, men's get-together, okay, so for the men in our church. Okay, I think that should do it. If there's no other announcements, uh, please feel free to greet Reverend Go and, uh, before he goes and uh, hear more about his testimony or anything like that. Okay, got it? Let's stand and sing our doxology.
Lord God bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus came to give you abundant life, super abundant life. Be happy, happy, happy. Enjoy your honeymoon, all you married people. Hey, Reverend goes in front. You're welcome to say hello to him up here.